إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار نسأل الله العزيز الغفار أن يجيرنا وإياكم من عذاب النار أما بعد أيها الأخيار يقول الله عز وجل في محكم كتابه يا أيها الذين آمنوا اذكروا الله ذكرا كثيرا وسبحوه بكرة وأصيلا هو الذي يصلي عليكم وملائكته ليخرجكم من الظلمات إلى النور وكان بالمؤمنين رحيما أيها المؤمنون عباد الله صفة كريمة وعلامة أصيلة على طيب القلب وصفاء النفس وسلامة الروح ألا وهي صفة الرحمة بها ينتشر الود ويتحقق الإيقاع ويسود القس وبالرحمة ترعى كرامة بني الإنسان وينتشر العدل بها تستعلي النفوس إلى أصل فطرتها وبفقدها يهوي الإنسان وترتكس فطرته إلى منازل الجمال الذي لا يعي ولا يهتز عيانا بالله فبالعدام الرحمة يسود الجو وتقل المحبة ويتخبط الإنسان في المهالك وتتحول الحياة إلى غابة يأكل القوي فيها الضعيف ويبتلي الغني بسطو بسطوه على مال الفقير وتنتكس الناس وتنتكس طباعهم ويضلون عن طريق الله السوي الذي ارسل انبياءه للدعوه اليه فدين الله القويم وصراطه المستقيم رحمه بين اهله ورحمه من رب العالمين لو كانوا يعلمون فنسال الله تبارك وتعالى ان يجعلنا واياكم من الرحماء المرحومين في الدنيا والاخره انه ولي ذلك والقادر عليه Brothers and sisters, an attribute that is very honorable and lofty. And if it happens to be in the heart of the majority of the individuals, it will be the reason for the families, the communities, and the nations to function much better. 
for people to help each other much more, for people's honors to be respected, and for their rights to be protected. It would also be a reason for oppression to decrease considerably, and for justice and equality to spread in the land, a quality that stems from one of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is called Ar-Rahmah. Seventeen times a day at least do we recite Surah Al-Fatiha. In it, we recite an ayah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls himself Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. One of the translations of the meaning of Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim the entirely merciful and the especially merciful which only shows us shows you and I the importance of this attribute and how fortunate we are to be among the ones that worship Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim a Lord that calls himself the merciful one indeed Ar-Rahman, mercy is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts in the natural disposition of his creation. It should push the individual to be compassionate towards others, to be saddened by their pain, to try to give them comfort and relief. Mercy should push the individual to want to see the others healthy and happy, and to overlook their shortcomings, and to want guidance for them. It is truly an attribute that is worthy of being assigned to the Lord of the Cre of the Lord and the Creator of the heavens and the earth, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his angels attest to that. قال الله عز وجل الذين يحملون العرش ومن حوله يسبحون بحمد ربهم ويؤمنون به ويستغفرون للذين آمنوا ربنا وسعت كل شيء رحمة وعلم فاغفر للذين تابوا واتبعوا سبيلك وقهم عذاب الجحيم. Allah said, those, the, those angels that carry the throne and those around it, around the throne, glorify the praises of their Lord and they believe in Him and they seek forgiveness for the believers, praying, saying, invoking, Our Lord, you encompass. Everything in your mercy and, you, and, and knowledge. So forgive those who repent and follow your way and protect them from the torment of the hellfire. وقال الله عز وجل ورحمتي وسعت كل شيء. My mercy has encompassed everything. And this mercy of Allah, when He comes down, when Allah sends it down, will no creation in the heavens or the earth will be able to halt it or prevent it. قال الله عز وجل ما يفتح الله للناس من رحمة فلا ممسك لها وما يمسك فلا مرسل له من بعده. Whatever mercy Allah opens up for the people, none can withhold it, none can stop it. And whatever He withholds, none can cause it to be released. For he is the Almighty, the All-Wise. Rather, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is complete and all-encompassing. It includes all living things, jinn, mankind, animals. It covers the pious and the wicked. And it is ongoing and has always existed. That is why in the book of Allah, Allah he subhanahu wa ta'ala, speaks about Ar-Rahmah very extensively. As a matter of fact, the word Rahmah and its derivatives was mentioned in the Qur'an 268 times. And one of the surah of the Qur'an is called Ar-Rahman, one of the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke of the alternation of the night and day as an aspect of His mercy. وَمِنْ رَحْمَتِهِ جَعَلَ لَكُمُ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ لِتَسْكُنُوا فِيهِ وَلِتَبْدَأُوا مِنْ فَضْلِهِ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ And out of His mercy, 
He has made for you the day and night so that you may rest in the latter and seek his bounty in the former, meaning in the day, and perhaps you might be grateful. Also, from his mercy is giving relief from a calamity. وَإِذَا أَلَقْنَا النَّاسَ رَحْمَةً مِنْ بَعْدِ ضَرَّاءَ مَسَّتْهُمْ إِذَا لَهُمْ مَكْرٌ فِي آيَاتِنَا When we give people a taste of mercy after having, having afflicted with hardship, they swiftly devise plots against our revelations. Also, from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is lifting hardship and discomfort from those with illnesses and special needs. قال الله عز وجل ليس على الضعفاء ولا على المرضى ولا على الذين لا يجدون ما ينفقون حرج إذا نصحوا لله ورسوله ما على المحسنين من سبيل والله غفور رحيم There is no blame on the weak, the sick, or those lacking the means if they stay behind as long as they are true to Allah and His Messenger. There is no blame on the doers of good. And Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. قال الله عز وجل فمن يطوه غير باه ولا عاد فلا إثم عليه إن الله غفور رحيم. But if someone is compelled by necessity, meaning to fall into a sinful act, for example, those who find themselves in the desert and the only thing that they can eat is something that Allah Ta'ala made forbidden. Whether it's compelled by necessity, neither driven by desire, nor exceeding immediate need, they will not be sinful. Surely Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. Also, Allah Ta'ala shows His mercy in accepting the repentance of His servants. فَتَلَقَّى آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتِهِ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ إِنَّهُ هُوَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ And Adam had, was inspired with words of supplication, of prayer, by his Lord, so he accepted his repentance. Surely he is the, the one that accepts the repentance the most merciful. قَالَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ أَفَلَا يَتُوبُونَ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَهُ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Will they not turn to Allah in repentance and seek His forgiveness? While well, Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. وقال الله عز وجل قل يا عبادي الذين أسرفوا على أنفسهم لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. Say, all my servants who have transgressed, they went past the limit, beyond the limit. They went overboard in oppressing themselves by sinning. Do not lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Huh? SubhanAllah. Allah forgives all the sins. Indeed, Allah is all forgiven. He's the forgiven and the merciful. SubhanAllah wa ta'ala. Sending down the good rain is a clear aspect of the mercy of Allah. Who will let you nazir al ghaitha min ba'di ma qanahu wa yanshu rahmatahu? He's the one that sends down rain after the people have given up hope, spreading out his mercy. He is the guardian and our praise worthy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us in the Quran about some nations that have incurred the wrath of Allah. And that they were punished in the life of this world and will be in the hereafter. But his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he was the one that was sent as a mercy to mankind. He also said that the mercy of Allah supersedes his wrath. أخرج مسلم عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال صلى الله عليه وسلم لما خلق الله الخلق كتب في كتاب فهو عنده فوق العرش إن رحمتي تغلب غضبي وفي رواية سبقت غضبي The Prophet Muhammad said when Allah created the creation and he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, wrote in a book, in his book, that he put over the, the throne, that my mercy predominates my wrath. Brothers and sisters, one would ask an important question, so how do we attain the mercy of Allah? And the answer 
comes to us clearly in the book of Allah, the Sunnah of the Prophet. Number one, your belief in Allah, Al Iman Billah. قال الله عز وجل فأما الذين آمنوا بالله واعتصموا به فسيدخلهم في رحمة منه وفضل ويهديهم إليه صراطا مستقيما As for those who believe in Allah and hold fast to Him He will admit them in His mercy and grace and guide them to, to guide them to Himself through the straight path Number two The obedience of Allah Ta'ala and His Messenger قال الله عز وجل وأطيعوا الله والرسول لعلكم ترحمون Obey Allah, his messenger, so that you may be shown mercy. Number three, piety, an act of worship while following the footsteps of Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. قال الله عز وجل ورحمتي وسعت كل شيء فسأكتبها للذين يتقون ويؤتون الزكاة والذين هم بآياتنا يؤمنون من هم الذين يتبعون الرسول النبي الأمي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم الله سبحانه وتعالى My mercy encompasses everything I will ordain mercy for those who shun evil push evil away and they pay their زكاة and they believe in the revelation, in our revelations, they are the ones that follow the messenger, the unlettered prophet, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Number four, righteousness and uprightness. Inna qala Allah azza wa jal, inna rahmat Allahi qareebun min nal muhsineen. An nakuna nal muhsineen. Indeed, the mercy of Allah is close, very near those who, the people of righteousness. May Allah make us from them. Number five, patience and perseverance. الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون أولئك عليهم صلوات من ربهم ورحمة وأولئك هم المهتدون. Those when faced with calamity, with disaster, they say, surely to, we belong to Allah and to Allah we, will we return. They are the ones who will receive Allah's blessings and mercy and they are the ones who are rightly guided. Number six, striving for the sake of Allah. الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قَالَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَآجَوْا وَجَاهَدُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ أَعْضَمُ دَرَجَةً عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْفَائِلُونَ يبشرهم ربهم برحمة منه ورضوان وجنات لهم فيها نعيم مقيم. الله جعلنا من الله رب العالمين. Those who have believed and migrated for the sake of Allah and strive in the cause of Allah with their wealth and their lives are greater in rank in the sight of Allah and they are the ones who will triumph at the end of the day. Their Lord gives them the glad tidings of His mercy and His pleasure and gardens with everlasting bliss. Number seven, being merciful yourself, obviously. الرحم شجنة من الرحمن فمن وصلها وصله الله ومن قطعها قطعه الله. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, the merciful ones will be shown mercy by the merciful one, الرحمن سبحانه وتعالى. So be merciful for with the ones on the earth. The one in the heavens will be merciful with you. Then he goes on to say the womb, which in Arabic Ar-Rahim also stems from the word Rahma, mercy. Huh? The womb is named after Ar-Rahman. So whoever connects it, Allah will connect him. And whoever severs it, Allah will sever him. May Allah protect you and I. So the smart believer is one that seeks every possible means to attain the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you will seek every possible means to stay away from 
any reason for the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in Bukhari, Anjali ibn Abdullah, Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, La yalhamu Allahu man la yalhamu al-nas. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah ta'ala will not be merciful with the ones that are not merciful with the others. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be merciful with us. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم أستغفره إنه هو البر الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ولا أما بعد فقد أخرج البخاري عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إن الله خلق الرحمة يوم خلقها مئة رحمة فأمسك عنده تسعة وتسعين رحمة وأرسل في خلقه كلهم رحمة واحدة فلو يعلم الكافر بكل الذي عند الله من الرحمة لم ييأس من الجنة ولو يعلم المؤمن بكل الذي عند الله من العذاب the Prophet said, Verily Allah created mercy, uh, the day that He created it, and He made it into a hundred parts. He withheld with Him 99 parts and sent down one, one part for all the, the creatures. Then He goes on to say, If the believer only knows the mercy that Allah has, he will never lose hope in paradise. But if the disbeliever knows, subhanAllah, if the believer knows the punishment that Allah has, he might he might lose hope. He might consider not consider himself safe from the hellfire. We ask Allah Taala to protect us from the hellfire. Another hadith by Imam Muslim, hadith of Salman. The Prophet Sallallahu said, "Verily, Allah created on the same day when He created the heavens and the earth, one hundred parts of mercy." Every part of mercy is coextensive with the space between the heavens and the earth. And he, out of his mercy, endowed one part to the earth. And he, and it is because of that that the mother shows affection to her child, that even the beasts and the bird show kindness to one another. And when the day of resurrection comes, Allah will make full use of his mercy, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So brothers and sisters, when speaking about how wide and how great the mercy of Allah is, one should not lose sight to the fact that while Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful, he, he subhanahu wa ta'ala also holds accountable for the sins and He punishes for the transgressions. So the concept of mercy should not be a license to sin freely. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written the most important aspect of His mercy for those who truly deserve it. In the ayah that was mentioned previously, Allah Ta'ala says, وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ فَسَأَكْتُوهَا لِلَّذِينَ يَلْتَقُونَ وَإِتُونَ الزَّكَاةِ الَّذِينَ هُمْ بِآيَاتِ بِآيَاتِنَا يُؤْمِنُونَ May mercy, Allah said, my mercy encompasses everything. That's the general mercy. Then Allah says, I will ordain it, I will write it for those that, uh, the ones that believe and do the righteous deeds, the ones that have piety, that give their zakat and they believe in the revelations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which means, the mercy of Allah is general in the life of this world, and very specific in the hereafter. Hence the name mentioned previously in Surah Al-Fatiha, Ar-Rahman Al-Rahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls himself Ar-Rahman because, subhanAllah, that, that one part of the hundred that he sent to earth, that subhanAllah, the mercy that everyone gets to enjoy, every, everyone on the face of the earth, the believer and the nun, the righteous and the wicked, and the just or the oppressor, but when he, it's time for the accountability. We found ourselves in the land of resurrection, that the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has to do with this attribute of mercy will become a rahim which means specific mercy that will be exclusive to those who have believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those who have worshipped him, those who have established his tawheed and died upon that, and we ask Allah Ta'ala to make us from them. And so remember, the more merciful you are with the creation of Allah, the more mercy will Allah 
show you on the day of reckoning. Also remember that if it's not your deeds that will allow you into a jannah, but rather it is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hadith al Bukhari, in the Torah of Abu Huraira, the Prophet sallallahu said, none of you will be saved by your good deeds. Not if they ask, not even you, O Messenger of Allah. He said, not even me, unless Allah covers me for, with his mercy. But he said, but act correctly and wisely and worship in the morning and in the evening and during parts of the night and keep a middle path. You will make it there. You will arrive. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to include us in his mercy. We ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from the ones that have mercy in their hearts. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those that establish his tawheed and live upon righteousness. اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا واسرافنا في امرنا وثبت اقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم اجعل الحياه زياده لنا في كل خير واجعل الموت راحه لنا من كل شر اللهم ات انفسنا تقواها وزكيها انت خير من زكاها انت وليها ومولاها اللهم اغفر لنا خطانا وعمدنا وجدنا وهزنا وكل ذلك عندنا عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء القربى وإنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة.